One of the quantities we can compute for square matrices is called the determinant, and that emerges as follows. This is a somewhat complex definition, but uh, we define determinants recursively. So if I have an n by n matrix, the determinant of A, which we write using the vertical bar surrounding the matrix itself, uh, we're going to define it recursively as follows. First of all, if A is a one by one matrix, in other words, if A consists of a single entry, then the determinant is just going to be the only entry that's in the matrix. If A is a 2 by 2 matrix, I'm going to define the determinant as being this difference of the cross products, this product of the main diagonal A11, A12, minus the product of what you can think about as a counter diagonal A12, A21. And so that gives us, for example, if I have this matrix 3, negative 1, 2, 1, I'm going to form the cross product of the diagonal here with the product of the diagonal here. So that's going to be the product 3 times 1 minus the product of the other diagonal minus 1 times. And after all the dust settles, we find that our determinant is equal to 5. Now, if we have a larger matrix, we have to employ a little bit more notation. So we have to define one important idea here, which is the minor. So let's say I have an n by n matrix. The ijth minor of A is going to be the determinant of the matrix formed when I remove the ith row and jth column of A. And the ijth cofactor of A, written capital A IJ, so it has the same symbol as the matrix, except it has the index that we associate with the entries of the matrix. Uh, it's going to be the product of this determinant of the minor by minus 1 to power I plus J. And so note that if I plus J is odd, this value here is going to be negative. If I plus J is even, the value here is going to be a positive one. And so this produces what is sometimes described as a checkerboard pattern for the cofactors. So for example, let's take a look at this matrix A. And let's say I want to find the ijth cofactor. So that's going to be the ijth cofactor. I'm going to precede the determinant by minus 1 to the power I plus J. That's i is 2 and 3, so that's minus 1 to the power 2 plus 3 times the determinant of the matrix that I get when I eliminate the second row, third column. So that's going to be this matrix here, and that's a 2 by 2 matrix, and I know how to calculate that determinant. It's going to be the difference of the cross products, 3 times 1 minus 1 times 2. And again, after all the dust settles, I find my determinant. Well, let's find the determinant of larger matrices, and so we can do this as follows. We're going to choose any row or column that we want. We're going to find the cofactors of each entry in the row or column, and we're going to sum the product of the cofactors with the corresponding entry. So we find those cofactors, we multiply them by the actual entry in the matrix. So, for example, let's take this matrix here. It's a 3 by 3 matrix. So I'll pick any row or column, and so maybe I'll expand along this first row here. And so my determinant is going to be the row, the entry that I'm working with, in this case 1, times the cofactor. That's going to be minus 1. This is the 1, 1 entry. So that cofactor is going to have a coefficient negative 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 times the determinant of the matrix I get by eliminating first row, first column. And so notice I pick this entry here. I'm going to eliminate the things that are in the same row and the same column. And what I have left is going to be the matrix whose determinant I need to find. So there's my first term. Now I'm going to add in the second term. So that'll be negative 1 times the coefficient of that cofactor is going to be negative 1 to the power 1 plus 2. Again, this is in the first row, second column. So that's going to be negative 1 to the power 1 plus 2 times the determinant of the matrix that I get by right wiping out the same row and the same column as my entry. So that's going to get rid of this column, that's going to get rid of this row, and my entry, my matrix will be 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and I have to find that determinant. And then finally, I'm going to take the last entry in that row, this is the first row, third column entry, that's going to be 0, times negative 1 to the power 1 plus 3, times the determinant of the matrix I get by wiping out the same row, and same column as my entry 0, and that's going to be this matrix here, 3, 1, 1, 2. One thing to note is that the signs that I get for the cofactors form this nice checkerboard pattern. If the sum of the row and column 
is even, then this negative 1 is being raised to an even power. It's going to be 1. If the sum is odd, this negative 1 will be raised to an odd power. I'll get an odd number. And so the signs that I get, you can remember those as plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. They form a checkerboard pattern of pluses and minuses. So now I have a whole bunch of things I can compute. Negative 1 to some power, that's easy. This is a 2 by 2 determinant, and I do have a way of computing those. So we'll go ahead and fill in the blanks. This is 1 times negative 1 to the second. The determinant of the 2 by 2 will be the difference of the cross product, 1 times 3, that's 3. Negative 1 times 2, that's whatever it is, and I'll be subtracting that. My next term, I'll have negative 1, negative 1 to power 3, and determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix, I'll find the cross products. 3 times 3 is 9, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, so that determinant 9 minus negative 1. And my last term, 0, times negative 1 to power 4, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 times 1 is 1. Now, because that coefficient there is going to be 0, I don't actually need to compute this last determinant, but we'll leave it in there as part of our computation. And so now at this point, it's a bunch of arithmetic and algebra, really arithmetic that we have to do, and we find our determinant is equal to 15. Now, you might be a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that we can find the determinant by expanding along any row or column. Is it possible that we may make the wrong choice and expand along a row or column and not get the value of the determinant? And the answer is no. While there are better choices for which row or column to use, there's no actual wrong choice as we do our expansion correctly. So, for example, let's say I want to expand along the second column. So it's going to be along these entries here. So I'll start off with minus 1 times negative 1 to the power of, well, that's going to be the first row, second column, 1 plus 2. Again, if you think about that checkerboard pattern, this is going to be plus, this will be minus, plus, and minus will be our values there. But my cofactor, minus, and I'll eliminate the same column the same row, and my entry is 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and I'll find that determinant. My next entry, the 0, eliminate the row and column that it's in, I'll get the matrix 1, 0, 0, 3, and the sign of the cofactor is going to be positive. That would be plus 1, negative 1 to power 2, plus 2, and there's my smaller determinant. And then finally, this last entry, 2, eliminate the row and column, the cofactor is going to have sign negative 1 to power 3 plus 2. That's a row 3, column 2 entry. And again, you can go by the sign, the checkerboard signs. This is a plus, plus, this will be minus. So again, that'll be minus 2 times the determinant. Wipe out the row, wipe out the column, and I have my 1, 0, 3, negative 1 as my last 2 by 2 matrix. And I'll go ahead and let the dust settle on that. And after all the dust settles, we find the determinant is going to be 15. And so the determinant doesn't actually depend along among which row or column we choose to use. Now, is there a better choice? Well, let's think about that. When we expanded along the second column, I had to use my second column entries, negative 1, positive 1, 2. So there was my second column expansion. When I expanded along the first row, the coefficients I had to use were 1, negative 1, and 0. And while we're only multiplying by constants, and it doesn't really make any great difference in the grand scheme of things, the fact that one of these terms was zero made our computations a little bit easier. The fact that the magnitudes of these numbers were both, were both one also made our computations easier. So there is a preferred row or column that will make the computation easier, but there's no actual best row or column by any objective standards.